So God has been revealing a lot about what's going on concerning coronavirus, what he's up to, what the devil's up to, what our response should be as believers. I'm going to do kind of a summary recap so you can get really a full understanding of what God wants from us as believers and where our focus should be. So the first thing that God is doing with coronavirus is he's using this He's using this for good. He's using this horrible thing that came from the devil. He's a, he allowed it for a certain time for a variety of reasons. And I'm going to go into these now. We see with Job, the story of Job in the Bible, how he was afflicted so badly. He was sick. He, he had a severe sickness. Things were taken away from him. Um, his family was taken. His family died. He went through so much suffering. And it was all because the devil came to God and said, God, I see your servant, Job, and I believe he's only serving you because you treat him so well, because you bless him. So I bet that if things were taken away from him, that he wouldn't still worship you. And God knew Job's heart. He knew he had a strong heart of faith. And he knew that this was going to be a powerful moment to glorify God and to teach us thousands of years later as we read in the word about the faithfulness of God and God's ways and how God likes to use things, likes to use things from the devil and turn them for good for his kingdom. Um, and also he wanted to bless Job tremendously through this. So, uh, he says, okay, you can go afflict Job, but do not kill him. So we see all this affliction come upon Job, all this suffering, but we see the Bible says that Job never curses God with his mouth. He never sins, it says. And we learn about the power of our voice, of, of what we speak, that when we speak, when we speak like cursing God or cursing our future or cursing what's happened happened to us um, or, 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 or speaking words opposite of faith, fear, then we prophesy that upon our lives. That's what, it, that's what becomes of our lives. Job's wife said, uh, Job's wife said, curse God and die. She said to Job after Job was being afflicted so much. He's, she's like, why don't you just curse God and die? She had given up on God. She had lost her faith completely. And we see her and the family die because of that. But yet the Bible says that Job never cursed God with his lips. And so we see the result is that he hung on to faith. He knew that God was good through all of that. He endured all the suffering, but he just, he knew that God was going to come through. He knew that God would deliver him from that from that ailment, from the suffering. He, he, he stood on the character of God and that God was a good God, had good plans for him, and he would work out all things for the good. And because he stood strong in that, had strong faith in that truth, God ended up delivering him. He allowed the devil to afflict Job for a time. But then there came a point in time he restored everything to Job and more. He ended up giving Job, he healed him, and he ended up giving him more children than he had before. And in terms of his home, his, his livestock, his business, it was flourishing more than before. So uh, we're in that sort of situation right now where God is turning around things for the good. He, but he's allowing the devil to do something, to execute a plan for a time, for a, per, for a certain purpose. So we're going to learn what that what these purposes are. So number one is God is waking up the world, the world as in time, as in the times of Egypt, where the world, a lot of people in the world, not everyone, not the Israelites, but a lot of people in the world and the world rulers, Pharaoh and the Egyptians were going against God completely. And so God had to wake them up. He allowed plagues to come, which he didn't do, but he allowed the devil to do. 
he allowed these plagues to come so that trying to get the Egyptians to turn their hearts towards him, trying to make God's will be done. So there are countries in this world, leaders in this world, uh, and just many people in this world who are far from God and are acting like Pharaoh or acting like the Egyptians. There's certain countries specifically where God allowed the plague to, do, to, to come because of certain things that really are against God, that are really hurting God's heart. And I'm going to go into some of these now, which is a new revelation from God. One of them is China. China has been, has been persecuting Christians. I don't know if you've ever looked and heard in the news, but the persecution there of the Christians is, is so bad so bad. They are killed. Um, in this new pres current president, they're even changing the Ten Commandments. So they're saying, thou shalt only worship the president and not Jesus. They're changing around the actual Ten Commandments. They're taking, they're shutting down churches. They're persecuting people. They're arresting people, killing people for being Christians. So that is why God has to really get people's attention there that are doing major evil. That's when he can allow a plague to come. We see in Italy, we see the Pope, and people are worshiping the Pope. It's gone beyond honor and respect to worship. And the Pope isn't carrying the power of God. You know, God is a God of power. He's not even releasing the power, the true power of God. And so God is not happy with the worshiping there that's going on. Uh, that, that is where there's some allowing of plague to get people's attention of the things that are grieving God. For America, Satanism, though we do not, maybe we don't see it, by and large with our own eyes, but it's going on, Satanism, people worshiping the devil, that's going on. It's hidden, it's more underground. Um, you know, in Africa, it, 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 you see witchcraft, it's very visible. You also see the power of God more visible. But in America, you don't see either of those by and large. Why? Because the devil has a certain spirit over America. There's certain spirits that the devil strategically has where he has a strategy of how to keep the people in bondage by and large, like a large group of people in bondage, like a whole country. He tries really hard a certain strategy. For example, in some countries, poverty, spirit of poverty. You can see clearly in many countries the devil had a certain strategy uh, to blind people uh, with belief, to believe, blind, getting people to believe that they could never get out of poverty. Their, their parents and their grandparents and their great-grandparents were all in poverty, so they, they, they feel like that is just their portion and they don't have that kind of hope. Where in America, you see that's the opposite. It's the American dream. You see all these stories about people who um, made, made something out of nothing, came from nothing, and fulfilled their dream. So you see the difference in the spirits over the countries. One of the biggest spirits over America is the, the devil has, has blinded people to, to the fact that God is a God of power and he comes in miracles. And so there's a big spirit he's put upon America that a lie saying miracles aren't real, they're not from God, we don't need miracles, we're not hungry for miracles. There's been a strategic spirit over America. There are several strategic spirits he's put. I'll get to that in later times. But that is a strategic spirit he's put. And that's why there's so much persecution of ministers or ministries that carry the power of God. There's a lot of persecution if you look at it. Um, and on top of that, there's a lot of lukewarm Christianity where there's just not a hunger or desire for 
the power of God for miracles. There is just like a a hold a, a a a love of tradition, a love of religion, not a hunger for more of God. That's a strategic spirit that's over America. So because that's a strategic spirit over America, there is blindness to the fact that God moves in power and blindness to the fact that we need the God of power to deliver us. Because the God of power, for example, casts out demons, right? Yes, that's what we see in the Bible, all through Acts and when Jesus walked on this earth. But how often do you hear even that sentence like, Jesus casts out demons and demons are out there today and God wants us to be delivered from them. You, you like rarely hear that, but yet that is the, the, the core part of the Great Commission. Preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, right? So the devil is hiding in America. He has a strategic plan to hide, to hide behind diseases, to hide behind mental illnesses, to hide behind addictions to hide behind all these things and people have no clue, Christians, many Christians included, that it's a spiritual root, it's a spirit where someone needs to be, that someone needs to be freed of, it's the power of God, that all the medicine you're taking is a band-aid, but God wants to free you completely, deliver you in a moment, in one second by his power, just like we see with Mary Magdalene who had several demons inside and Jesus freed her in one moment completely, no medicine needed after that as she filled herself with his spirit. So it's a strategic plan of the devil to hide. So that's why we don't hear about Satanism or witchcraft. We, we feel, we don't see that. We don't see that in America in our physical eyes, but with spiritual eyes, you can see that it is a big problem underground and hidden, but it is a big problem. So there's that, there's also Freemasonry, which is grieving God. And there's also a spirit of, it's like anti-men, like a spirit of trying to push down men, like uh, instead of empowering women and empowering us to be united and a unity where men and women are equally important there is a spirit that's like more evil, like trying to push down men to make women more important. So much so that some people want to change the Bible so it doesn't say that God is, is he, like change the words around. Uh, that really grieves God. And this is something that we've, we've even seen before in, in the Bible. We see all the boys being killed at the time of of Moses trying to kill Moses. We see all the baby boys being killed. So we see that similar spirit of trying to suppress the men. What I'm revealing right now are the new, deeper, neat that God has revealed. So he had re he's revealed before that there was a plagues that were coming to shake things up, to get people's attention who were very evil, who were going very against God. Uh, and so now he's revealing the details, the, the, the exact things. And this is important so we can know as believers, it's, it's, it's easy to live in the world and forget the, 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 the things that grieve God so much, you know? I and mean, things become so normalized and popular in our culture in news and we can forget that the the most of the things that we watch on on TV movies TV news most a lot of a lot or most of it is not from the spirit of God the messaging that's coming out is not from the spirit of God and so it's not wrong for us to watch the news and secular things but we have to remember that though what's being screamed at us or portrayed to us is normal is normal and is even good it's being said as good we must be spiritually alert and aware of what we receive as truth and don't idolize what's coming from tv just because that's a higher level than us physically so that's why God wants to reveal this to you so you can start to become more spiritually aware 
and not be deceived to accept and condone things that actually really graves God. These are the, some of the specific things of why God was allowing, like in China and Italy and America, this coronavirus to go on for a certain amount of time and this plague to really hit. Uh, also, I, I bring this warning that there, you know, in the time of Pharaoh, God had to keep bringing the plagues until the hearts were turned, until the hearts were turned, until the hearts would change. So there could be some, some other things that come in the future, uh, different, different things to shake people, to get people's attention, to get people to turn to God. But God cares about his people so much that he will allow drastic things to take place. But it's important for us as believers to know how protected we are in this, just as the Israelites. Wow, that was crazy, all the plagues that were happening at that time. But they were so protected. The Bible talks about all the plagues that were coming down. It didn't touch the Israelites. It didn't hurt them. They didn't get sick. They didn't die. But the Egyptians were dying. All the different plagues, all the different kind of plagues that came, they were killing the, the Egyptians, but they didn't touch the Israelites. And that was actually, the when, when they were witnessing that it was God doing those things, that actually made the Israelites become more on fire for God and see his love like never before for them. And that was the catalyst for their deliverance. They had to be all united and be on one page for them to be delivered out of Egypt. They couldn't be all scattered. And God came in such power that it, God proved, proved that it was really him. He proved Moses as their leader. They had to be all on one page and they had to be all submitted to Moses and be able to be willing to follow Moses. So God did these mighty works and it actually brought about unity with the Israelites and it brought more passion for God and it brought the fear of God. It brought the fear of God. So it brought humility to them. So it's important for us to remember in this time right now and for things that may come in the future, it is so important for us to not have fear but to rather actually be excited because anything that God allows is, is, is to take us to a better place. It's to take us higher, is to bring us to a new glory, even if it comes wrapped up as a plague, but what's behind it is for our good. I know many of you, including myself, have, I've found so much transformation in myself in this time. I was just sharing yesterday how God is, this is the refining fire, that's happening right now. And there is so much change that's going on within us if you lean into it. And that's what I want to, to share right the second, the second point. So number one, it was to get people of the world's attention. So specifically people, unbelievers, people that were like Egyptians, people like Pharaoh, it was to shake them up, show that they're not in control, cause them to look to him and come to him and stop the persecution that's happening and stop the things that are grieving God's heart. Number two, God is using this for a time out for us, for believers. Believers and unbelievers alike. It is all a time out for us to stop and think about our actions, to turn to God. We are forced to look to him. We are forced to seek him, to spend time with him. We are forced to look at any ways we need to change. We, this is a humbling experience. We've lost some freedoms in this. This is humbling. Every person has been humbled to see we are not in control of our lives. God has been speaking this to all of us in this season. I want more of you. I want your whole heart. I want your surrender. I want you to go from lukewarm to on fire for me. I want you to give your whole heart to me. I want you to become childlike and humble. 
I want you to be open. I want to use you, but I need you to be more open to something new that I'm going to do. I need you to stop being judgmental. I need you to stop being critical. I need you to stop being about so so about your life, your dreams, and, and completely about my dreams. This is what God has been doing in this season as well. This is why he's allowed it. This refined fire here is making us come out like gold. God's focus is the people. God's focus is you. God's focus is not the coronavirus. His focus isn't that. He isn't like afraid of that and trying to figure out, well, how can I stop this so, no, no, no. He, his focus, he's allowing this so, and his focus is on the people. His focus is on you. He wants your heart. He wants his people's whole heart. There's a lot of lukewarm Christianity. He wants his people to be on fire and to humble themselves, to not be know-it-alls, to not be judgmental, to not think they know everything about Christianity and God, but humble themselves and be open to be used by him, to be open for him to do a new thing. So that's the other thing that God is doing in this. Another thing that God is doing in this is he is preparing the church, the body of Christ, for a stronger unity than ever before, than we've ever experienced, ever before. The devil's scheme in the coronavirus was to gain control. It was a spirit of anti-Christ. This is not the end times. This is not a sign of the end times. We're not there yet. But the devil was trying to prepare the way for the Antichrist later, just like John the Baptist was sent to prepare the way for Jesus. So he came with this trying to control. And he's trying to see how, can, how much control can I have? How much will they give me? How much freedom will they give me? How much will they give into fear? When we have fear, we give the devil control. Faith is what gives God control. Fear, giving into fear, is what gives the enemy control. It hands over the authority, our God-given authority that God has given us, to the devil, and he is able to then control. We become his slaves when we give in to fear. That is what happens. So the devil came with this like scary thing and he was strategic about it, using people that don't have faith to be full of fear and to sound alarms, whether it's leaders, whether it's media, whether it's people in your life, he uses people to be so full of fear that they scream it very loud. And he's trying to get believers to give in to that fear. But believers, we know that God is all powerful, that he is way more powerful than a coronavirus, that he has the power to destroy this thing. And that while it's good to be careful and to be use wisdom, to be cautious even, we should never, ever, ever, ever give in to fear. We should never live in fear. We should watch the actions that we are doing and the words that we are speaking and ask ourselves, is the spirit of fear behind this? Is this what's motivating me to take this action? Is this what's motivating me to write this post? Is this what's motivating me to speak this out? Is that fear? And that has been the case for a lot of people. A lot of people, the actions that they've been taking, the words they've been speaking, the posts they've been making has actually been driven by fear, believers. So the devil came with a strategy. God revealed the strategy. He cannot think straight and cannot do his work when the believers are gathered together, worshiping in church together. The worshiping together creates a frequency. Faith, faith, words of God, word positive confessions of who God is in God's will, that and worship 
and unity. Those things. Worshiping God. Faith. Faith-filled confessions and unity, which is strongest when we're physically together. Those things release a frequency in the spiritual realm. They release a strong frequency that, that makes the devil all confused, all troubled, unable to work, unable to do his work, his plans. That is the powerful things that are happening when we are united, confess positive confessions of faith and join together. So the devil's scheme was to close down churches so we couldn't gather together. We are still united and our unity has been never been, been more needed than ever through online. We are still united, but there is an even stronger united, unity when we're gathered together. A big reason because the stronger ones can help the weaker ones. So though the strong ones are tuning in on live every day, there are weak ones that are watching Tiger King and said, watching, you know, watching, watching, turning to drinking and, and watching Netflix for many, many, many hours to instead of turning to God. There are weaker believers where if we did have physical church building, they could be helped, they could be seen by the stronger ones. I'm sharing this just so you can know the scheme of the devil. God's still working this off for the good, but I'm sharing this so you can know the scheme of the devil and also the importance of physically gathering together. So his scheme was to get us out of the churches and to get us get the people alone so he could really speak, 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 speak fear, fear, fear uh, with, with people not around them physically believers, strong believers, to see all oh, this believer needs edifying, lifting up, encouraging. So it was his scheme to, to try to create division and not have unity and to make the worshiping more quiet so he could go forward with his plan and to instill fear because fear is what gives him power. That was his plan. So knowing this plan Believers, God is calling us to be united like never before, to have a heart of unity like never before, to, to, to stop thinking about just ourselves or even just our churches or just our group of friends, but having a heart for the whole body of Christ and seeing, seeing each other with different eyes. And that includes having an, more of an open heart. To be united, that requires more of an open heart. The bigger the body, the bigger the different opinions and different characters, and right? But the body of Christ, we're all different. We have fingers on here, we have arms, we have noses, we have eyes, mouth, legs. There's all these different parts and they have different roles and we need all of them. And when you're just in like one church, maybe, maybe that one church is just focused more on the, the, the elbow or the shoulder or something. But you need to know that God needs the whole body. We need the entire body to be working together. And there's been a lot of speaking against one, speaking against fellow believers or speaking against other churches in the past. Now is the time for us to stop doing that, stop speaking against our own body, right? I mean, how silly is it for me to say, I don't like you, pinky, get away from me, cut you off. I don't like you, foot, I'm going to cut you off. That doesn't make any sense, right? But that is what it's, what's happening when we speak against uh, our fellow believers. So God wants there to be unity among all of us. But for unity to, unity to take place, we need to have the heart for unity and we need to, to have hope. And if we see that, that there needs to be change in someone, we need to stop being so quick to judge and instead pray and instead love them. So, when we are united and when we confess the positive confessions of faith, taking our God-given authority that God has given us, according to in Genesis, when God, before he created Adam and Eve, he said, light be. He spoke creation into existence. Him speaking made there to be come something, made creation to exist. 
He was executing his authority. And the Bible talks about when he created Adam and Eve by speaking. It says that he then gave them the authority over all of earth. Then we know how what happened. They, they gave their authority to the devil by obeying his voice. He asked them to do something and he did it. And they did it. So that's the same thing that happens today when we obey him by that voice of fear comes. We know in the Bible, God did not give me a spirit of fear. So when we hear a voice of fear, like oh, fear, be afraid. Like we, we feel that feeling of we should, you should be afraid. We must know that is not from God. That is actually from the devil. You must resist it so the devil can flee from us. When we accept it, partner with it, obey that word. Yes, I'm afraid. That is the same action of Adam and Eve handing the devil authority. So now he has authority over them. So now when you give into fear, you give the devil authority. Jesus returned that authority to us. And it says in the Bible that he has given us all of the all power over all darkness in this world. We have authority over all powers of darkness in this world. So we hold the power we need to use it. And this is what God instructed us to do. What, what our big role that we need to do in this season right now is we need to resist the voice of fear. Every single voice of fear that comes, we must resist it because the spirit of fear is what gives coronavirus power. That's what gives it power. That's what gives it power. That's the real power behind it. The devil is allowed to continue on with the coronavirus because fear is louder, has been louder. Fear of people, of believers alike and unbelievers, has been louder than the authority of believers speaking over the devil. The positive confessions of faith. The devil has not been hearing the positive confessions of faith, so he's been able to have authority. Now, this is where I, 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 God wanted me to reveal all of this and go further in what exactly is our role and, 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 and how exactly should we be in our heart in terms of like contentedness. You know, I know that we are supposed to be, you know, angry at the devil. You know, we're, I mean, the, the, the Jesus wasn't messing around with the devil. He meant business. He didn't play games. There was a, a, a remember when he flipped up, flipped the tables? He was angry there, it, but it was against the devil. So it's important for us to, to, to have that seriousness and holy anger against the devil. Uh, intense desire for God's will to, done, will to be done with the revelation that we have the power over the devil and we are not letting him play around. So we need to be that way in our hearts, in our minds, in our actions, in our words. But at the same time, we're called to like contentedness, right? So I, God wants you to, to, to not have confusion at all, but really to know your proper mindset that you should have and your heart. Because it's a, it's a lot. It's okay. We need to take authority over the devil, but we should, but God's allowing this. What? Like, you know, it can be confusing. I know many people are kind of confused, and this is something new. So God want, wants to help you understand the balance, because there is a balance. So, when we speak the word of God, when we declare his will to be done, and when we are united together in that, when we're resisting the voice of fear, we raise that frequency, that frequency, that spiritual frequency, of anointing in the spiritual realm that makes the devil crazy and drives him away. It says in the Bible, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So when we gather together as believers and do that, it drives him away. He retreats. He must flee. We are executing our authority over him. So that is our big calling right now. That is the assignment that God has given us to be extremely about unity with one another like never before. So that means not speaking badly about fellow believers. That means even there's, there's been strategies of division and through politics and everything with posts and 
decisions of reopening or not and all of that. And there's been like kind of angry, you know, it's this is the right way. This is the right way. This is the right way. We need to make sure we are really focusing on the spiritual thing that's going on and not get too caught up with politics. When we focus on what God's called us to do, everything will iron itself out and the truth will be revealed. The spirit of Antichrist is coming, has is 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 here trying to control people, trying to see how much control he can get away with. And so we need to focus on executing our authority so that he cannot have control over us. So the biggest thing that we need to be doing is resisting fear. When we can focus on that by declaring God's word, God's will, he, he's forced to retreat. We know that the spirit of Antichrist wants to control. So that's going to come, that's going to manifest in certain ways. That means that there are, he's going to work through people to try to control. So that means that there are certain strategies that the devil has uh, executed through people that are evil, that are about controlling. So there will be a reveal. There will be, God will reveal it. God is in control. God is not going to let the spirit of Antichrist win. God is a God of justice. We got to unite with him though. We got to partner with him. But there will be, we will see some, some truths come out. We will see maybe some evil things that were being done, trying to take power over people. These things will come out. But the way in which they will come out is when us as a body unite together, not go against each other and be like, you are absolutely so wrong. No, there's no way this can be. Or this is what's really going on and you are so wrong. We can't come with that spirit of division. The devil loves that. He wants that. He want, He's trying to cause division because the unity is what makes him to go away. So let's not take on this big role to be the you know, political leaders and, and but let's really focus because it can it can get messy when we're coming at it when you come at it with a division spirit. We need to focus on unity. We need to focus on what God's called us to. God has called us to execute our authority over the devil and resist the the spirit of fear. Let's focus on doing that with one another. And when we see posts, maybe politically or whatever, or opinions on reopening or not, all of these things. When we see these online fellow believers, let's be careful to not feel angry towards that person. Let's, let's be aware of the devil's scheme in this. And let's instead, when, as soon as we see that, maybe you even feel it, confess God's word, pray, pray for that person. If you see a lot of anger in that person or a lot of division or misguidance or whatever, pray for that person, declare, I declare the eyes to be open and I declare this person's heart to hear what God's saying and to have a heart for unity and have faith because a lot of these angry passion filled posts and everything is coming with a spirit of fear. So we have to remember that spiritual warfare that's going on and focus on, we, I gotta love my brothers and sisters like never before. I might be disagreeing with them like never before, but I gotta love them like never before. This is a team effort. We gotta focus on being a team. We have to be united. We cannot get out of this thing one person, just by ourselves, no matter how much faith we have. And so, I know, I wanna share with you right now, um, Maybe you feel full of faith, you know, maybe you've been doing all the right things spiritually. Maybe you're, you haven't given into fear at all. You've been declaring God's word, God's will, and it is kind of jolting to, uh, to, to hear, especially because we haven't heard this really before. This is kind of a new territory. The fact that we need everybody, we need a lot of people. We need unity and many believers to overpower the devil. We need us to join together, many believers, to resist fear and positively confess God's word and execute our authority. We need a lot of us to make the coronavirus to go away. That can be kind of jolting. We're not used to that. We're used to like, 
as long as I have faith, I'm good. <laughs> I don't care about anybody else. You know, like we're used to that because we haven't, I mean, we haven't experienced something like this before. And that can be jolting like, ah, come on, people. Come on. This is frustrating. Like, but I know there's temptation to feel like frustrated. Like, come on, this is annoying. Like, if you could just believe. If you could just not have fear. But, um, you know, it's it's kind of going into the deeper inner courts with God to like get to know his heart and how loving his heart is. Like, imagine how fresh tempted it would be fresh frustrating for God. I mean, he loves every single one of his people. But imagine all the things that he sees. He sees what goes on in people's hearts. He sees people's actions. We don't see half of the evil that God sees. We don't see half of the disobedience that God sees. And he loves his people way more than we could ever imagine loving anybody. Imagine that. So with this, we are going in the inner courts more to, to, to understand how amazing God is and experience his, his heart more. And we are invited to do what he does in terms of responding out of compassion and love instead of rejection, hurt, anger, frustration. You know? We have the invitation. So you might feel like, ah, oh, this is frustrating, but shift that how God would do that and focus on, on love and doing what you can do. What you can do, and th this is, this is eye-opening for us, that we are called to be vessels of God and it's not just about us. It's not just about us getting to the promised land, to our personal promised land. I'm gonna say that again. It's not just about you getting to your personal promised land. That's not why you're on this earth. You're on this earth to serve God, to serve people, to help other people. It's not about your personal promised land. It's about helping others come with you to a promised land. It's about making sure there's as many people with you that have received, can receive the same revelation that you've received, who've been delivered from things that you were delivered from, who've been, who could be healed of things you were healed from. It's receiving the love and power of God and then being a vessel to make sure as many people as possible can receive that same love and power and freedom and healing. We, we got to do everything we can to reach people for the kingdom. It's not on our hearts so much all the time because many people are so focused on their personal promised land. But God wants us to, when you're focused on other people all the time, you, you, that's how you get to the promised land. You naturally get there. But when you're focused on it, you're missing the whole purpose of the promised land. It's not just about you. So... This is a big eye-opening moment for us and a, a waking up to see we are called to do everything we can to help others, to help them experience what we've received. We got to do everything we can. We got if, if you're touched by a video, share it. You have to release and we're seeing the effects of this now. We're seeing people not have faith and be stuck in fear, and it's affecting all of us. Coronavirus hasn't ended yet. We're still here because a lot of people haven't gotten what we've gotten. Well, who's going to get what we've got? Who's going to receive Jesus? Who's going to receive the opening of the eyes, the deliverances we have? How is that going to happen? Only when we become vessels and allow God to move through us. That's the only way God works through people. He works through us. That's how he reaches people. So, this is a big opening of our eyes. This is not something to get frustrated about, but this is a waking up, like, see, you need one another. You're not here for your personal promised land. You're here to reach my people, God says. So reach them. I'm forcing you to go reach them, <laughs> and, and then I'll free all of you. And then I'll free all of you. We gotta have this, this fire, this heart to serve God for his people, heart for his people. We gotta have this fire. So this is what God wants us to do in this period. This is the main thing. 
in, to, in our personal life to resist fear and to execute our authority and do everything we can to have other people do the same thing, be united with us, be in God's will. What does that look like? When a video touches you and your eyes were opened and it blessed you or you experienced God's love or His power, share that video with everyone you know. When you talk to people, your friends, tell them about God. Tell them about testimonies. Tell them what He's done in your life. Use your social media for God's glory. Don't be ashamed of Him. He says, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Don't be ashamed. God is preparing everyone's heart, unbelievers and believers alike, to receive Him. Don't be scared. Now's the time to release. If you've been holding back, now's the time. Use your social media for God's glory. Post the Word of God. Post videos that touch you. Anointed videos. Posts, pictures. Glorify Him. Use your platform for Him in every way. This is what he wants you to be focused on. Focus on this. So, we're in this season right now where we know God has allowed this, but then he had revealed later that, okay, now it's time for us to be free from this completely. Like, coronavirus gone, like, we're back in how life used to be in terms of we can go to restaurants, we can go to work, we can go to school, we can travel. God wants that. It's not God's will for us to be not doing that for 18 months. That's not God's will. It's not God's will. So he has revealed that, okay, he wanted to allow this for a certain time. But when the Bible says when you pray and seek him, he will then rescue you. He will heal your land. When you humble yourself, pray and seek him. So that has been happening enough for him to rescue us, but we have to get other people on, on board. We have to get other people on board to resist the voice of fear. So we know that he allowed it for a certain time, but now he has revealed that, okay, it's up to you guys now. Will you give the power to the devil or the power to me? Because I'm ready to rescue you. I'm ready to heal your land. I'm ready to deliver you. But you gotta, ever, more people have to be united in this. Too many people are giving into the voice of fear, and that's I don't, I, my hands are tied because I gave you guys authority, just like my hands were tied with Adam and Eve. Anytime that you reject God's voice and you accept the devil's voice, the, the devil has authority over you. So, we should be so focused right now on uniting one another and spreading this word. That is a big focus. At the same time, as I was sharing yesterday, there's a refining fire continuing. As the, the longer that this continues, the bigger reward for the body of Christ. God is preparing us for revival, for the greatest awakening we've ever experienced, ever. God is preparing us for that. And that's why he needs us to be from lukewarm to now on fire. That's why he needs us to all be about all about his will and not our will. That's why he needs us to be surrendered to him. That's why he needs us to be united. United in faith. But number two, we must be united on the fact that we want God's will done no matter what. When that is really your heart, the Pharisee spirit and the religious spirit is not allowed to come in. When that is really your heart. And there is many Pharisee spirits, religious spirits out there that are looking to condemn and persecute the real God who is working through people in power because it looks different, but they're not used to. So God needs that to get out or he will be rejected completely by his own people, by his own believers, people that call him their God. So there's a uniting, a humbling process that's happening in this refining fire where we're having to choose God's will over our will. Plans have been getting canceled. We've, we've been humble. We've been moved to this place of, God, I want your will no matter what. I'm okay that my plan got canceled because I know you're doing something in this. So in this period, we're still like in a waiting period right now where we're not, we should be working hard, bringing unity and releasing faith to people and executing our authority. 
and destroying the powers of the spirit of fear in people's lives. We need to be working hard at that while we're waiting for people to come on board and unite and resist the spirit of fear. But we also can be content here. You know, as I was speaking before, our purpose is not to get to the, the, the promised land, our, our individual, our, just me getting to my promised land. That's not why we're here. It's about other people, serving other people. And then when you focus on that and that's all you care about, then you'll get to the promised land. But let's make sure we're not getting angry because we're not getting to our personal promised land. Let's make sure we're not getting angry at believers. That's what happened with Moses. Moses got so angry that the people weren't at his level of faith <laughs> that he disobeyed God and because of his anger at the people for not having faith. And he couldn't get to his personal, to his promised land. Where if he would have just been focused completely, I know that God gave me a special grace to have more faith and I'm going to be patient with them as God's patient with them with God's grace and empowerment, he will help me. I, I'm, all, I'm just about the people. Then it might have been different. It would have been different. And so we're, maybe if you've been full of faith, you know, and doing the right things, but you're not able to, you're still stuck in your house and coronavirus is still here. Now's the time to not be like Moses and not be complacent either. We need to really go to work, execute our authority, resist the spirit of fear reach out to people focus on them and God will get them there as he works through you so as we're doing this still be content where you are understanding that I'm doing everything I can but I'm not going to get annoyed because it's tempting to get annoyed like once it's revealed what God is doing and what, what once it's revealed that this thing could have ended sooner if Believers didn't give in to fear, weren't paralyzed, their faith wasn't paralyzed. It can be frustrating, you know, it can be frustrating, like, oh, this could have ended by now, you know. But don't give in to that frustration. Be content because God is still working it all out for the good. God has promised us that the greater the the waiting period, the greater the the reward, the greater that the devil is allowed to do this thing with the coronavirus keep us locked up the greater the reward so you're in the refining fire so even though it could have ended sooner there's more refining that gets to go on so you get to become more beautiful and more beautiful it's becoming like sped up your process is becoming sped up through this so do all that you can what i just shared do all that you can all that god has called you to do but at the end of the day, rest, knowing that God's in control, that you're doing all that he's called you to do, but be content. You know, the plans have been canceled because of this. Be content. God's doing something amazing in your life through this. Be content. God's giving you more time to spend with him. Be content. God has miracles in store for you in this. Be content. Be content through this. Rest, rest. God is in control and God's moving. Know that your work is not in vain. Know that you're reaching out to people and obeying God is not in vain. God is moving. So that is what we're called to do right now. Be at peace, rest, and get to work. Take authority over the devil's kingdom. That's what we're called to do right now. Share this message. It's important. God wants us to be in the light and to have a full understanding of what he's doing, to know what he's doing and to really, really be able to know what he wants us to do and how he wants us to be in our hearts and our mind. It is very important to him for us to be united in this, for us not to be confused, for us not to be frustrated and angry, but for us to really be united in, in his will and what he wants us to do. So it's important for others to hear this message, so make sure you share this so we can be united and we can destroy this coronavirus once and for all.